Hello data folks. Thanks for joining me again on this channel for data and IT professionals. Many people ask me why DBT seed does not work for large files or why DBT seed takes so long to run. Others wonder if they can ingest data directly from cloud storage into their warehouse using DBT without relying on additional EDL tools. And then there's always the need to work with seed files in other formats, such as JSON, Avro, ORC, or even Parquet. In this video, we're going to explore a scalable DBT solution that can handle all of this efficiently. We'll take a practical look at how to load large data sets into your warehouse using DBT without running into the usual performance bottlenecks, and how to work with a wide variety of file formats in a clean, maintainable, production-ready way. Before we jump into the solution, it's important to understand something. DBT Seed was never really designed to ingest large raw data sets. It works great for small lookup type of files, but when you try to use it with large files, it becomes slow and in many cases, completely impractical. That's because DBT Seed reads the file from the local environment where DBT is running, converts it into an insert statement, and pushes all of that into your warehouse row by row. It's not optimized for bulk ingestion or parallel processing at all. It's also worth mentioning that DBT is popular because it runs efficiently in lightweight environments with limited compute and network resources. So working with very large files can push DBT beyond its cost-effective sweet spot. On top of that, since seed files are part of the code base, teams eventually hit size warnings or hard limits from Git repositories. For these reasons, using DBT seeds for larger data sets simply does not work. But thankfully, DBT provides a much more efficient approach to bring external data into your warehouse. And it's something many people still don't take full advantage of. It's a package called DBT External Tables. This package completely changes the way you handle large files. Instead of uploading the files in the C directory of your project, you simply place your files in cloud storage like Amazon S3, Azure Data Lake Storage, or Google Cloud Storage. Then, with just a little configuration, DBT can automatically set up external table on top of it for you. And once that's done, all your downstream models can reference this external data just like any other table in your warehouse. This means you can work with massive data sets, different file formats, and even partition folders without writing custom ingestion scripts or relying on separate EDL tools. Everything stays inside your DBT framework, fully version controlled and fully visible in your model lineage. All right, let's now take a look at how you can set it up in your own project. As a first step, add these lines to your package.yaml file and run dbt depths. Next, we'll have to set up an external stage pointing to your cloud storage. If you already have one, you can use it, or you can create a new one by following these instructions. For more details on how to set this up, refer to the links in the video description. I'm using Snowflake for this demo, so I'll be referring to an external stage. But if you use a different platform, then it might be called an external schema, an external data source, or something similar depending on where you're working. On successful external stage setup, you will be able to list the contents of your stage, just like I do. Next. You will also need the file formats created depending on the type of source files that are available in your requirements or project. CSV is used for all field separate file types, such as comma separated, tab separated, and pipe separated. If your project involves other file types, such as JSON or Parquet, you should create a separate file format for each of those as well. That pretty much covers all the setup you need before you can start using external sources in your DBT project. People already familiar with DBT know how source tables are defined in YAML files and how they are referenced in the subsequent models using source references. We will be using the same framework for external sources as well. The official GitHub repository from DBT Labs has many examples for each data platform. Let's dive deeper with an example. To begin with, please give a name for this source. This is the name that you will reference in your models. Next, configure the database and schema where DBT 
should create the external table definitions. Under this, you can define as many tables as needed. For instance, you may have multiple folders in your storage bucket, one for product data, another for location data, and so on. Each of these will be defined as a separate table. With the help of location and pattern, you control which folder and file should be included for a particular table. I've already created the file formats. I just use it here. Down below, just define columns as needed. Generally, source tables that you configure are already available in your warehouse. But in case of external sources, the tables are not yet created in the warehouse yet. So you'll have to create in your warehouse before we can reference them or models. The good news is we don't need to worry about that. With all the configurations in place, DBT handles everything with a single command. DBT, run operation, stage external sources. Even if you have configured hundreds of external sources, this one command creates all of them in your warehouse in one go. Let's verify that in the warehouse. Perfect, we now have the external table created in Snowflake. It's worth mentioning that external tables are just pointers to the original data stored in the cloud storage. The actual data still resides in the cloud storage. But if you create a DBT model on top of this external table, materialize it as a table, and run the model, that's exactly when the data is copied from your cloud storage into Snowflake. Let's go ahead and try creating a model on top. Please take a close look at how I've used the source reference with the data source name and table name defined in the YAML file. You can in fact add any transformation needed, such as cleansing the data, joining, and aggregating as needed. But for this demo, I will just select the required columns from the external source. You can run, test, or build this model just like any regular model and reference it in any downstream models as needed. As you can see, this has created the table in my warehouse. As I mentioned, this step extracts the data from cloud storage and loads it into Snowflake. The main differentiator here is that the data never comes to DBT servers. DBT just creates the pointer or the external table. The actual data transfer happens directly between your cloud storage and Snowflake. And these two platforms are built for high performance parallel processing. So there's no question of compute or network bottlenecks. This is exactly why the solution we learned today is far more scalable and performant than seed files. That's all for today. Please stay tuned for our next video, where we'll explore more data technologies. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button to stay up to date with our latest content. Most importantly, please share this with your friends. It truly helps us bring more videos your way. Thanks for watching.